constrictive pericarditis. Etiology, pathophysiology, and pathology. Constrictive pericarditis is characterized by an abnormally thickened and non-compliant pericardium, which abruptly limits ventricular filling in mid to late diastole. This results in elevated end diastolic cardiac filling pressures and the equalization of pressure in all four chambers at end diastole. As cardiac filling is compromised, cardiac output is reduced. The clinical features are secondary to systemic venous congestion. Before the 1960s, tuberculous constrictive pericarditis was the most common cause of pericardial constriction worldwide. In the developed world its importance has declined, and the etiology is usually idiopathic, post-radiotherapy or post-surgery. Clinical presentation Common Edema, abdominal swelling, and discomfort caused by ascites or hepatic congestion are most frequent. Vague abdominal symptoms such as postprandial fullness, dyspepsia, flatulence, and anorexia may also be present. Cachexia and fatigue suggest a reduced cardiac output. Uncommon Exertional dyspnea and orthopnoia may occur when ventricular pressures become severely elevated, as may platypnoia, dyspnea in upright position. Physical signs Common Elevation of the JVP with prominent X and Y descents is the most important clinical sign, plus the following. Atrial fibrillation Kuzmal's sign, inspiratory rise in JVP Pericardial knock, third heart sound. Hepatosplenomegaly, ascites, and peripheral edema. Cachexia. Uncommon. Pulsus paradoxus and signs of severe liver failure. Investigations. ECG. This may be normal or show nonspecific generalized T wave changes, low voltage complexes, or atrial fibrillation. Chest radiograph. This is usually normal, but the cardiac silhouette may be either reduced or enlarged. Left atrial enlargement, pleural effusions, and pericardial calcification are nonspecific findings. Echocardiography. Echocardiography shows pericardial thickening. Septal motion is abnormal and the left ventricular posterior wall flattens abruptly in early diastole due to rapid equalization of left and right ventricular pressures. During inspiration there is a marked reduction in diastolic mitral inflow, Fig 62. Cardiac catheterization. This is usually needed to confirm the diagnosis, with characteristic equalization of end diastolic pressures in the two ventricles. Persisting with respiration and fluid challenge, Fig 63. CT and MRI. These imaging techniques may be used to demonstrate the extent and distribution of pericardial thickening, Fig 64. Differential diagnosis. Consider the following Chronic pericardial effusion, Restrictive cardiomyopathy. Superior vena cava obstruction, excluded if there is a pulsatile waveform in JVP. Congestive cardiac failure. Nephrotic syndrome. Malignant hepatic or intra-abdominal disease. Treatment. A minority of patients may be managed medically with diet and diuretic therapy. Most will require pericardiectomy. An early operation is recommended. Complications. Severe venous congestion with chronic hepatic impairment is common. Death results from the consequences of an inadequate cardiac output. Prognosis. Morbidity. Without treatment, most patients deteriorate progressively with severely limiting symptoms. With pericardiectomy. 90% improve and 50% may gain complete relief of symptoms. Mortality The outlook in untreated cases is poor.
Hospital mortality rate after pericardiectomy is 5-16%, and 5-year survival rate after surgery is 74-87%.